verses 1 and 4.
anybody know the British uh, in the bleak midwinter? Is that a, familiar to anybody except me? Yeah. Of course they do. Okay. I, I'd like to do uh, 221 in the bleak midwinter. <clears throat> 221. First place, Andrew Bleak Winter. Um, oh. Verses 1 and 2. Oh. Or, Pastor, would you like to choose the verses? Could we do 3? Verse 3. Because I, this is the only Christmas song that has Jesus being, like, kissed by his okay. mother. Verses and I and three. love that. Verses 1 and 3 of, of hymn 221. Thank you very much, Christopher. Two more. Okay. Two seventeen. Good classic. <coughs> two seventeen versus one and three, please. Two with two seventeen. Yes. Okay. Verses one and three.
Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax list. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn son, a child, a son, wrapped him snugly, laid him in the manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them, the Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You'll find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel, praising God, and they said, Glory to God in heaven and on earth, peace among those he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. And everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, let's pray. Lord, there are many ways that the Christmas season gets twisted away from you. Some of which we manage to fight, but we confess that there are ways that it still slips away from us. Lord, guide us today as we celebrate your birth, as we celebrate your coming, as we remember that you cared about us so much that you are willing to come down and be born a human, poor, alone, not even a cradle to be put in, just a feeding trough, used, dirty, but you came. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for coming for us. Thank you for seeing our worth as so much higher than we do. Forgive us for when we forget you in the midst of your season. 
Forgive us for when we forget our own worth in the midst of advertisements telling us that to be worth anything, we need whatever they're selling. Forgive us for forgetting who you say we are and our own worth when others try and cut us down. This Christmas, let us remember the value that you put on us. Let us remember how much you care. Help us to see each other through your eyes, not to write off anyone as too far gone when you came for all of us. Lord, we know that there are many who are homesick and unable to participate in Christmas and festivities like they would wish. For those that are injured, thinking particularly of, of Bob that couldn't come today for, because of his fall, we ask for safe healing and swift. For those who are still sick with flu and cold and COVID and RSV and bronchitis and everything else that is filtering around right now. We ask that you be present with them today, even as they are having to be by themselves, perhaps. That your presence will satisfy and your joy will still suffuse their lives. Lord, be with all who are traveling today. Give safety. Give uh, wisdom in our speaking and our gathering. Give us patience with loved ones who we adore, but perhaps try us more than we should. Give us mouths to speak, and give us duct tape over those mouths when we should remain silent. Help us to know the difference, Lord. As we pray together the prayer that your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join in the insert hymn, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. <laughs>
I had not realized, I apologize for those who are watching on Zoom, I had not, um, I had not realized that my voice would be the loudest that you would be hearing, and you have my deep, deep condolences. <laughs> uh, I should not have been the one to sit near the microphone. Not for the singing, anyway. Uh, so in lieu of a sermon, we are, um, we're going to explore the Christmas story from a slightly different perspective. It seemed like everyone has heard how the shepherds were told about the baby Jesus early the first Christmas morning, but everyone hears about it from the shepherds' point of view as if they were the only people visited that night. No one has ever heard the other side of the story, our story, what happened to us angels that night. I remember that first Christmas like it was yesterday. How could any of us forget? We had been preparing hundreds of years for that day, half longing to see the day when humanity would truly meet God and half dreading it, mourning the day when we wouldn't be in the presence of Jesus ourselves anymore. Even that night, I really wasn't sure if it was a good idea or not, but I trust God. So when the call came for volunteers to go share the news that God had come to earth, I jumped at the chance. After years of waiting, the day had come when mankind would meet their Savior. How could any of us wait to tell the people? Angels were flooding Bethlehem that night, spreading out all over town to share our own excitement with the people there. I headed straight to the synagogue. What better place to tell people God is among them than where they are already worshiping God? When I got there, people were praying to God, asking for a savior, a miracle, a sign. I was so excited. I took a gentleman by the shoulder to tell him the good news, but he just shook me off and prayed even louder. Except now he was praying for peace and silence. No one would listen to me. They just turned up the volume and ignored me. I couldn't reach a single one of them. They were praying so hard, but they wouldn't listen or believe that their prayers had been answered. I couldn't believe it. When I first came down, I sought out the people on the fringes, those people who were looking for a savior more than anything else in life. Surely those people deserve to hear the news first. I found some living in a cave nearby, hiding from the Romans and waiting for their Messiah. I told them about baby Jesus and urged them to come see him, but they laughed at me. They told me that surely I knew God would come to them. If they had to go anywhere, it must not really be God. I think I broke a little inside when I heard that. They were so close to the greatest miracle on earth, but didn't want it if it wasn't their way. I was so excited. I couldn't contain myself, but no one seemed to care about what was happening. Surely the others were having better luck. Well, when I came down, I went straight to where the most people were, right on the main road, lined with shops. The entire town was packed with people, thanks to the Romans, people who could use a savior. But no one would even look at me. They were walking with the weight of the world upon their shoulders, bent over and staring at the ground, unsmiling, unhappy with life, shrunk inside themselves. They weren't looking at each other, let alone looking for God. They wouldn't even look up at me when I came and spoke to them, but avoided eye contact like it was a plague. The only people who would look at me, who paid any attention to me at all, were the merchants. And they weren't listening. They just wanted to sell me stuff. No wonder the people wouldn't listen. They didn't trust anyone anymore, not even their God. I remember thinking, 
Have we come too late? After an hour of trying, tears were streaming down my cheeks. Everyone I met was so hurt. They wouldn't even go meet the one person who came to save them from it all. It was a long and frustrating night. When I started, I had only wanted to rejoice. But soon, I only wanted to give up. I went to where people were already celebrating, but they were too busy with their fun to pay any attention to what I was saying. They couldn't spare the time from their wine, from their family, their fun, to listen to news about a baby. They didn't want anyone, me included, to get in the way of them enjoying themselves. In desperation, I went to the people everyone seemed to be afraid of, the Romans in charge of the city. Surely leaders like these people would care about something as important as God coming to earth, and then they could tell everyone else. But they made me wait in line, in line. They were so certain of their own rightness that they wouldn't, they couldn't believe there was anything more important than themselves, especially a baby. And I was discouraged. We, we all were. Would this whole God in flesh idea even work? Would anyone listen? Or would God himself be ignored by the people who needed him so badly? We had to find someone who would listen, who would come, who would testify to what was happening that night. Other angels were, were still trying to find someone in town who would listen, but I couldn't take it anymore. I, I, I just sort of wandered around. I, I felt depressed, confused, worried, and stressed out. We were sent on a mission to tell people that their God was here in the flesh to talk with them, to love them, to save them. But no one was listening. How could no one care about that? As I stumbled out of town and, and passed some, some hills, I, I noticed something. It was people. They were, there were a dozen or so, and, and they're teenagers, <coughs> lounging around, chatting and watching the stars while keeping half an eye on some nearby sheep. They looked bored, just waiting for something to happen. Perfect. Suddenly, though, I was excited again. Here were people who were waiting, longing for something to happen. I went to them as quickly as I could, but I was so excited, I must have been glowing a bit because they panicked. I did my best to calm them down, so excited that they could be the first people on earth to see their God face to face. I could barely get the words out. Barely, barely get the sun saying, don't be afraid, I told them. I have great news, joyful, wonderful news. And not just for you, but for everyone everywhere. Today, right here in Bethlehem, a Savior has been born, your Messiah and your King. Go see for yourself. You'll find the baby wrapped in cloth and laying in a feeding trough. At that point, the rest of us couldn't contain ourselves. I know it was overkill, but someone was finally listening. Someone was going to understand. Someone was going to see their Lord. We all burst in on the scene, shouting at the top of our lungs, thanking God for letting someone see his son. All of creation praise God, and here on earth may seeing this give you peace. You have never heard anything like it. It seemed like every angel in heaven had come down to join in the praise, to see the first people worshiping their Savior in person. The shepherds didn't really understand yet, but they knew it was important, and they went to go find the child. 
Most of the other angels left then, but a few of us stayed around to watch. I was still worried that these shepherds wouldn't understand what they were seeing. They heard what we were saying, but they didn't get it. They were scared. They weren't rejoicing yet. We followed the shepherds to the manger, and when they saw little Jesus, their entire lives changed. It's rare you see an internal change on the outside of someone, but that night we could. That night they understood. They experienced what we had always felt, the presence of God. I had a smile as they began to do exactly what we had spent the night doing. They ran through the town yelling and telling everyone they met about the baby. I didn't even dream of trying to stop them. When you meet God, you have to share it. They came back a few hours later, no more able to win people over than we were. But they came back to worship. It was the most wonderful night, the most frustrating night that I can remember. It isn't easy to see sometimes, but ever since that night, there is hope. All the same excuses are still around, and people can ignore that baby just as easily as on the night he arrived. But people can also hear the message we were shouting. If they would only want to listen, and people can still meet their Savior if they only choose to go look. Don't be like the rest of Bethlehem. Look up. Look around, look for Jesus, and you will experience what the angels have always known. God with us and with you. Please join in the insert Christmas song, Come and Worship.
Uh, we will be entering into a time of communion. So if you do not have one of the communion cups, we happen to have a variety of elves who are able to deliver them. <laughs> and are appropriately scaled for this holiday. Yeah. Okay, and everybody has one? Or, uh, excellent. Okay. Um, we need there. You might want to take this time to open your containers, as that sometimes takes more than the liturgy itself. Yes. The under the purple wrapping is going to be the wafer, and then under the silver is going to be the juice. And this, this is no. This well, oh. clear. There we go. There we go. Well, if you could join with me in the prayer, uh, Christmas prayer of confession before my uh, before we take communion. Lord of Christmas peace, we have done wrong. We have tarnished the gift you gave freely. We have buried you so deeply in our hearts, the world doesn't see you. We have not followed Christ when we have ignored your teachings. We have lived lives of apathy against your love. We have built fences and fortresses to push people away, and we have silenced the screams of those who need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from our sin, free us from our captivity, free us to a life lived in joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to God, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was over, he took... Wait for it, we'll get there. When supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, God's mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Because there is one loaf, we who are many, our one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ broken for you. You may take the bread if you have not already. <laughs> and the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ shed for you. You may take the cup. Please join in the carol number 246, Joy to the World.
Thank you.